Hey everybody, Coach Brian back with you and we're working next on a series called Recover Your Art. It's a four part series and the reason that there's four parts to it is if you want to get to the root issues and you actually really want to strengthen the muscles, keep the nerves healthy and rebuild your arch from the ground up. So maybe you want to be able to walk barefoot without pain. Maybe you want to be able to be in some more minimalist shoes without pain. Maybe you want to um, take out your inserts and the big angled shoe that has a high heel, uh, not technically a high heel, but kind of a heel lift, where it's got that big padded heel often uh, given out by experts, foot experts. And then what happens when we're in that big angle? Oh, we start to get some low back issues and we start to get some pelvis issues. And uh, not mysteriously to me, there's a ripple effect from the foundation upstream in the body and we start to create other issues, potentially. Uh, I hear it enough that it's actually pretty consistent. So if you want to get to the root issue, actually do the work uh, to fix, again, the root cause, the root problem, and actually strengthen the foot, and then move better, and kind of reestablish good connectivity to the ground, change your movement patterns in a positive instead of a negative way, this might be a good series for you to check out. So stick with me. The first exercise that we're gonna do is not really an exercise, I want you to do an assessment first. So we're gonna go ahead uh, today, keep it simple, and I just want you to walk. So spend about 20 seconds walking around maybe the room that you're in, get a feel for how those feet are interacting with the ground, how does the ankle, the lower leg, the knee, the hip, the low back, how does all that feel as you walk? So that's your baseline assessment. And then after each of these exercises, we're going to go ahead and go back and reassess. So the first exercise we're going to work on is a flexion and extension wave in the foot. So this comes from um, Dr. Cobb and Z Health and some of the other exercises I've picked up from Dr. Emily Splickle, who's a podiatrist and uh, does more kind of holistic care for the foot, the ankle, to help uh, people regain movement instead of losing more movement. So what we're going to start with here on the flexion extension waves is a curling of the toes. We're going to press down into plantar flexion in the foot, then we're going to bring the toes up, and then we're going to pull that foot up. So it's toes down, foot down, toes up, foot up. And if you can start to smooth that out, you'll notice that there's almost this wave-like motion, hopefully, in the foot and ankle. So toes down, foot down, toes up, foot up. Then we'd go ahead and repeat on the other side. You could reassess or take a walk just on that first side in between here. I'm going to move through this and flow through it with you. So we'll just do both sides quick. So again, toes down, foot down, toes up, foot up. Toes down, foot down, toes up, foot up. And then if we reverse it, it's foot down, toes curl, foot up, toes up. So we're pushing the foot down first, toes stay up, curl the toes, foot comes back up, and then we're going to reset the toes or pull them back towards you into extension down. And as you flow that together again, it should start to look like almost a wave-like pattern. Let's go ahead and reassess. So uh, take another 10, 20 second walk, get a feel for hey, did that change things in a positive or a negative for the lower leg and the foot? Um, I find a lot of times when we start to add viscosity or lubrication to the joints, when we move them more, motion is lotion, we start to actually see some improvements. So hopefully that was the case for you on flexion extension waves. We can also do those with the hands, by the way. And the hands often have a relationship to the feet, and sometimes we can improve things in the foot by working on the hands, but that's a different video. So the next one we're doing is a four down, one up with the toes. So Dr. Uh, Emily Splickle teaches this one and it's basically we're gonna push four, down, four toes down into the floor with good pressure and then pull the big toe up. And then after a 10 second hold, let's start with 10 seconds on the hold, we're gonna reverse that, push the big toe down and pull the four toes up. So 10 second hold again, I'm on a, a mat here, so if you want to pad it, uh, be on a mat or a pad. Um, these are Naboso mats. They actually have some uh, sensory, kind of these little pokey knobs on it to add some neurostimulation so your brain's getting more communication from that bottom of the foot. If that was tough for you, here's 
a quick fix maybe where you need to start. If you can't differentiate between the big toe and the other four toes in the foot, A, we want to work on that. Uh, that's not necessarily normal. Um, and B, we also, um, to fix it, have, have a quick solution. So if you can pull your four toes up without the big toe, great. If the big toe wants to come along, you can go ahead and at first, still with kind of a mental focus on only these four toes coming up, you can keep pressure on the big toe to differentiate those two, okay? And then same thing, if you're pushing down and it's hard to pull the big toe up with the other four down, they all wanna come up, we could push down on those four toes while you lift the big toe. And try that for a few days and then retest and see if you can reestablish that differentiation between the big toe and the other four. And then of course we do the other foot, so 10 second hold with one position, 10 second hold with the other position, four down, one up, and one down, four up. And then go ahead and walk again. So reassess, get a feel for how's the gait, same, better, worse. Uh, if it's better, it's an indication that your brain really liked that input or that exercise, that motor stimulus, where you're driving down, um, improving motor learning in the foot. And indication then too that maybe that's a great thing to practice consistently throughout your week. So the last exercise that I have for you today, we're gonna to get into a forward step, kind of like you're in your gait pattern with one foot forward and one foot back. What I want you to focus on though is the lead foot today. So we're gonna come up onto ball of foot and then we're gonna practice some eversion and inversion in the foot. So I'm just rolling my weight from the big toe metatarsal head here over towards the pinky toe and I'm in a sense, really working on that arch of the foot. So big arch, see that increase the arch size, and then you're almost practicing an intentional semi-collapse of the arch. Um, not really collapsing it though, because we're still keeping the muscles active even as you roll into eversion there. So 10 of those, 10 in, 10 out, and then repeat on the other foot. As you get more comfortable with this, we can work into more of a lunge position to increase the load. So you can be in a longer step with a little bit of forward lean, really loading this lead leg more, but that's a progression. So start with a closer split stance there, feet closer together, and again, 10 to the inside, 10 to the outside. These should be pain free as you go through these movements. And that's the last exercise I have for you today in part one. I want you to go ahead and take a walk again, spend 20 seconds walking around, and again, pay attention to how's everything from the core, the low back, down into the hips, knees, and ankles feel. Hopefully you got some positive improvements out of that, and I'll see you soon in part two of Recover Your Arch.